Yes. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. I'm censored and unmuted, Larry. <laughs> Say that again? Uncensored and unmuted. <laughs> yes, and unmasked in Canada. Oh, we there are. we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, three. welcome everyone. Uh, yeah, here we are. Wow. What can I say about Katie Weedrick? Huh. She's an amazing woman of God, sister, mother in the kingdom, a blessing for many, many, many hearts, many lives have been affected and infected with the presence and, and love <laughs> that her and Dennis bring. They've paid the price. They've endured the cost. And we, we do honor Katie. We honor you. We honor and we, we welcome you to this challenge. We welcome you to this crazy experiment that we're doing. And um, we're, we're grateful that you said yes to, you know, we've, we've admired what you've walked through, even with, you know, and I imagine you'll share some of your story. And um, of, of, of how it, you know, you'll start with everything in any ways. Um, but we've honored the, the, the walk you've walked and how... It's been, um, it's crucible, but you've stayed sweet. Yeah. You've say, stayed sweet in the fire. You know, the thing where we've done challenges before where it's like, you know, finding peace in the midst of chaos mm -hmm. or in the fire and stuff like that. And I love the, the allergy, the the allegory or whatever of of the pottery in the kiln and and at that last part the the potter is waiting to hear um the piece sing mm. and to me that depicts your life we've walked with you we've seen you walk through some deep deep waters and yet you've through the exercise of grace, through the exercise of the works of faith, not the works of ambition, not the works of the law, not the works of, of the things of the soul, but with the works of the, of the faith of God in you, you've, you, you're coming into a place of mastery. And that's what I want to honor in you is that you've come into a level of mastery of expanding kingdom reality where it needs to be expanded because sometimes we've got mental ascents on how the charismatic kingdom should appear in more meetings or more but you've brought it down to the daily glory what i would say is 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 living and walking in the daily glory with the spirit and when we heard about you doing this gratitude thing it's like oh that's interesting interesting it's like but but watched and listened and 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 really observed what it did to you in the flame what it did what it produced in you and what the ripple of it was it's like wow okay it's kind of like reading a story of Corey ten Boone and some it was like the the that level of of observing something supernatural going on because it's not just a, a self-help it's not just an intellectual psychological it's a supernatural empowerment that we're talking about we're not talking about a mental ascent or a, a, a self-discipline we're talking about sinking into the supernatural ability the grace is the supernatural ability of the Holy Spirit to empower to change, empower to cooperate with the metamorphosis. And, and we honor you. And without apology, I say I honor you as a prophetess in Canada, as, as a true apostolic prophet that you've paid a price, that you've, you've drank many cups, you've drank many things and you've learned much but i honor you jacqueline i honor you as an apostolic prophetess in the land 
And that's why we trust you. That's why we say yes and amen to everything that Christ is with you and through you, especially this week. What an honor. Well, thank you. Well, you, you know, um, this is real relationship. And I, um, I, um, was talking with Lorna McDougall, who was on your challenge a few weeks ago. And I, I believe that Lorna would not mind me repeating what she said. And she said, wow, what they've got going feels like real family. Hmm. And I think Hallelujah. that was what we were trying to come into in all of these 20 years, yeah. was we were trying to be family. You are family to my children. Um, hmm. My children trust you, know you, have gone to you to seek counsel. We've, we've um, together contended for each other and with each other. Uh, and I think it is out of the genuineness out, uh, of family and community that we can really impact each other. And so thank you for trusting me with your family because this group that you're with and that is coming alongside um, your very unique way of presenting the kingdom because you and Jacqueline have the kingdom resides in you in its uniqueness. And I think how the kingdom is expressed is as unique in our communities, our kingdom communities, so to speak, or kingdom families, as Christ is unique in his expression in each one of us. You yeah, know, man. and yeah. I have valued your uniqueness over the years. Mm, wow. um, and I don't want this to sound like one of those <laughs> conferences where we spend 10 hours introducing, that's an exaggeration, <laughs> introducing the introducer who introduces the speaker, you know, and it all wants to look like whatever. But I do want to say this. Um, I felt this strongly uh, about the love that my children have for you. And they're all adults. They're all, they're not little anymore. Um, but they have loved you and Jacqueline from the time they met you. Mm. Uh, and I, I know this might sound like an odd start, but I want to start my gratitude this way. Mm -hmm. um, because we've journeyed together and we've known the importance of each other in our lives, when you and Jacqueline were battling, when you were in Joseph Brandt Hospital back in the day when you were really unwell, and there were all kinds of people contending for you, there was an evening in our home that I had a sense that you were going to die. I had the sense that you were right on the edge. And uh, I went into Dennis who was in the family room and I called our son Joshua down from um, his room. And I said, I think we really need to pray. I think there's something that wants to take Larry out. We knew that you were in um, Joe Brandt, Joseph Brandt at the time in Burlington. So we all prayed. And uh, we prayed together as a threesome. And then I had gone back into my office and Josh was sitting in the office with me. And he said this, uh, he had said to me, you know, mom, I didn't cry when grandpa Weedrick died. I didn't cry when grandpa Sieber died. If Larry died, I would cry. And he said, and then he just got really quiet and he went like this, he went in language that was not Joshua's language. Mm -hmm. He said, Larry Pearson, do not leave. I have need of thee. And he went like this and he pulled mm -hmm. and he said, do not leave. I have need of thee. And I sat there and I was quite undone wow. by his passion wow. and his love for you. And then typical Joshua peered on his heels, walked out of the office and went back to his room. Like, that's Josh, you know, did this, mm -hmm. done that, gone. And uh, I hadn't seen gold dust in probably five to seven years. The gold dust that we used to yeah. see back yeah. in the early yeah. days of their mm -hmm. renewal and the Toronto yeah. Club scene. So I'm working away on my keyboard and I see gold dust on my keyboard. And I thought, wow, that's very strange. Haven't wow. seen that in years. Mm -hmm. So I went back to the bottom of the stairs, called Josh down, and I said, would you show me what hand you reached up to heaven to pull Larry back? And he said, this hand, I said, take a look at it, and it was covered with gold dust. Hallelujah, you know? wow. And uh, I never want to forget 
I never want to forget that. I never want to be ungrateful. Now, Joshua and Dennis and I were not the only people praying for you by a mm -hmm. long shot. But I do believe that because of Joshua's connection, his bona fide love for you and Jacqueline, and our understanding that Jacqueline didn't want to live her life without you, mm -hmm. and that we didn't want to live life without you, mm -hmm. a, um, he was probably 15 at the time, reached up and said, I have need of thee. Wow. We have needed you, Larry. And uh, the body of Christ needs you. And I want to say that for the record. When a 15-year-old knows who they need to live life well, I want to say that that was a, a clarion cry in the body of Christ, that it wasn't just Joshua that needed you. It's all of us. And so thank you. Wow, because thank we you. need what you and Jacqueline bring to the body. I value it and I'm grateful for it. So I'm going to start wow. there. And, and that okay, is before not. I start to cry, you better start to cry. Or you better I'm already, start to... <laughs> I'm already crying. Thank yeah. you, Katie. What a way to start. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, Thank yeah, you. I didn't see that coming. I, I didn't that wasn't how I intended to start, but there we go. Wow. All right. Goodness. Um, when you asked me to talk about gratitude, I thought, oh, I can I can talk about that because I've been practicing it for quite some time. Uh and I recognize that I've been practicing it longer than I was aware of. So I'm going to just talk a little bit about the journey of cultivating gratefulness, because I think it is a bit of a cultivation. Where it became a decided practice for me was in March of 2011, actually early on in 2011, a good friend of mine, I think she knows you well, Kate Culver, um, had introduced me to a book. This was um, coming into the second anniversary of the loss of our son, Joshua. He had gone, he had gone home to heaven. Um, we were still in the grieving process uh, and trying to find our way into what became our new normal. And Kate introduced me to this woman, a book called 1000 Gratitudes by a woman named Ann Voskamp. Now, Ann Voskamp has since been, her books are regularly, I believe all of her books, but at least um, 1000 Gratitudes made it to the New York Times bestseller list and was on there for a, a long time. I think it was almost a year um, that her book was on there. So I read the book, it was transformational. And I decided at that point that I was going to get a journal and start to record 10,000 gratitudes. I mean, 1,000 gratitudes. Uh, but then I, as I got into it, uh, at the time there was a chorus, and Jacqueline, you would know it. It was 10,000 reasons for my heart to sing is one of the lines in one of the songs, the, you know, anthem songs that the body of Christ, was, some of the body of Christ was singing at the time. And I thought, Wow, I started into it and I thought, no, I think my goal would be before I do my final toes up, um, that I'd like to have, I'd like to leave behind 10 journals of 1000 gratitudes and that that would be a way for me to show Papa that I have a grateful heart, kind of something in black and white that I could leave. So I started in, in March of 2011 and uh, I started on, um, the anniversary of Josh's 11th year. Uh, so I started my 11th journal on April the 20th of this year. So I've completed um, eight of them. I'm on my ninth. And I tell you what, I'm getting to 10,000 sooner than I thought. So we'll see how many I have to leave before I finally exit um, this realm into another. Uh, but anyway, it has become a practice. It's something that I actively do. I think of um, just all the things that I'm grateful for. And there I am now. I'm, um, I, did, I did the math. I'm a 250 into my 11th journal. It takes me about a year to fill a journal with 1,000 gratitude, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more. Uh, and I think that because that has become a type of spiritual discipline for me that I actively work on recording the big things and the little things that make my heart grateful. Does that make sense? Totally. Yes, it does. Yeah, that's really, really good. 
Yeah. So you started it in the 11th year of... I started in 2011, two years after we lost Josh. So, wow. Yeah. So I'm not, however many years that is. Yeah. And so was it difficult for you when you first started? Do you know, um, no, to be honest, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I think there was a grace that was on me to practice gratitude. And one of the, one of the things, and I was, I've, I've been pondering over it the, mm -hmm. the past number of days in thinking of doing this with you, where did it start? And I'll tell you where it really started, which might sound funny, but um, when I was in conflict with people or I had petty annoyances, do you know mm -hmm. what a petty annoyance is? Oh, you never. Know? <laughs> so, you've never even tasted petty annoyances. We should live so far above it. But you know what I mean? Whether that is relational petty annoyances, workplace petty annoyances, um, whatever it is, I recognized I could focus on the behaviors of the individual that was driving me mad at the time. Hmm. And I could focus on all of the negative parts of them, which I was really good at doing. You know, I, hmm. I could see all the bad stuff. Most or, prophetic people are. I know. I know. <laughs> You can be blind in both eyes and still see it. But anyway, um, you know, I, I was, I thought I can either focus on this or I can focus on what's good. So this is what I started to do. Anytime I said something uncharitable under my breath about an individual that was, that was bothering me, um, I made myself say five good things about them. Wow. Now that might sound really immature and this might sound lame but i tell you what it wasn't as lame as it might sound no. there were two, <laughs> two i'm just going to be really transparent here but you know when you are stuck in conflict with somebody no. um, or petty annoyances or whatever it is it's almost easier to go through your day focusing on what they do wrong um it just becomes a pattern it's a habit you, you yeah. recognize um all the annoying things that they do and uh because sometimes you have to work harder to find the good things. Um, I thought, yeah, I'm either, <laughs> I'm either going to, um, this, it, it honestly, it became like a natural and logical consequence to me. If I said mm -hmm. something uncharitable about someone, I had to find five good wow. things to say about them. That was my internal discipline. So then it keeps you in two ways. It keeps you aware that there are five better things about the individual or the situation than there is about the one negative thing. And then the other downside to that is if you want to slow your day down by grousing and having to stop and find five good things to say, you're going to quit. You're going to quit. Do you know that's what? Brilliant. I know that's, that's just brilliant. so lame, but that's honestly where it started from. And I thought, that's brilliant stop because you're going to have to find five things and depending on the annoyance level of the individual or the situation i had to work to find five good things but i wouldn't relent it it became my between holy spirit and i my natural and logical consequence for complaining about an individual or a situation to wow. be frank that's where it started wow and, and right I, there right there that like sila pause and ponder that and i'm i'm preaching to myself pause and ponder that because it really is easy for us any of us some more than others depends on their disposition all that stuff but it's really too easy to live in annoyance it's too easy to default to complaining it's too easy for me to get annoyed frustrated and all that stuff so i think even that nugget is way worth the the <laughs> the admission which is free but anyway but it's not been um like i said at the beginning it's not been without a price on your part dennis's part and and to me if 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 that type of of execution of dominion over your your own tent that's what authorizes authority to other tents, so to speak. Not that we're over people, not that we're trying to 
have dominion over everybody, but dominion over the flesh, whether it's dominion in me, my flesh, my, my habits, or dominion from other people's fleshly ways. There's an executed, gained authority, but if it doesn't start in Jerusalem, our own heart, how can we even think? And I'm preaching to myself, I'm surely not above at all. I'm preaching to myself, it's like, okay, start with that level. To me, that's a transformational key that can so uh, unlock many, many um, hearts. Jacqueline. Yeah, I was just going to ask for the book title again, but I see that Gail Marsden put it in because there was one comment. They just wanted to know the name, but it's covered. <laughs> so do you have any questions Gail about any questions of what Jacqueline or what Katie just said? I did. Um, I'll have to come back to it though, because okay. I was distracted by that note there. Yeah. But I did have a question. Sure. Isn't that rich though? It like, is rich, yeah. Like if so, we're still on this vein of transparency, Jacqueline. If I if I exercise this key, <laughs> <laughs> how much more of the kingdom would be expressed? <laughs> No, it's so hard though, eh? It's so hard because sometimes you can really get offended easily if you allow yourself to get offended by the petty annoyances, as you call it, or like just comments or whatever that people might make or people might do. Mm -hmm. And I just really like that discipline of in your mind switching and coming up with five things that you find good about that person. Like, oh, that is brilliant. Holding your own. It, yeah, I think it's... um. I think it's wonderful to be able to do that and to just capture that because the enemy definitely would hate that. But it also helps us to focus on how Papa sees that person. Yeah, and yeah, and it really the, it, yeah the, the 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 plan that he has for that person because that's not who they really are. They're mm -hmm. new creations, and God is wanting to call us up to who we really are in Him, and. The group here, a lot of the people in this group are very sensitive, prophetic types and, you know, super sensitive in the spirit to what's going on around them. So we might be even more vulnerable to people's comments if we care totally. so much about what they think. That's or, such a good point. You know? And so because there are super sensitive folks here, this is really an important critical point that when we feel offended or distracted in a negative way mm. or whatever, to just ask Holy Spirit to give us five good things about this person or this situation or whatever. I just think it's brilliant, Katie. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. Well, well, let me tell you um, a, a really sweet piece uh, and, and how this evolved. Uh, I, I had a somewhat complicated relationship with my mom. She and I had difficulty finding our way to each other. And... Uh, no, I think as, as, you know, as, you know, after I left home and I started to see things perhaps from a different perspective than I had when I was living in my family of origin, um, I, I started to, I think like many of us, uh, I started to become aware of what was unmet, unmet needs in me. You know, yeah. I think you can live in your family of origin. It feels so normal that it's just life until you come out of it and recognize, oh, that's kind of not so normal and things need to change. And so I had somewhat distanced myself from my mother with a um, subtle and not so subtle judgment of you, you really weren't the mother that I kind of wanted or needed. You know, I, I, I was of that, I'm 65 now, so grew up with some of the television shows like Leave it to Beaver, where um, the mother was amazing. And I always wanted Timmy's mother from last <laughs> You know, yeah. she wore an apron and she, she didn't wear pearls like June Cleaver because I knew my mom could kind of never wear pearls, but I thought maybe she could morph into, June, in, into Timmy's mother. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Wear an apron and be kind and there you go. And so anyway, that was kind of what the longing was. And I think when I recognized it wasn't there and then I distanced myself from her, uh, I recognized she wanted to find a way to me, but I wasn't making it easy. And so a uh, dear little soul got um, diagnosed with uh, cancer and 
that wakes you up real quick when you recognize, mm -hmm. oh, they might not be around very long. And so I had gone to her, I, you know, made my journey to where they lived and, uh, and, you know, was talking with her. And I said, you know, I was never a very teachable daughter. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, I'm, I'm really sorry for that. I was lying in bed beside her holding her hand. And I said, um, I, I'm sorry for that. I said, would you teach me some things that I don't know? Well, that dear little peanut, she was just a little peanut. Um, she started in right away, like right away. She said, always put a vanilla bean in your sugar jar. Always put a little sugar in your tomato sauce. And she went on and she must have listed off 10 or 15 things. I thought maybe she'd tell me over the rest of her life, but it was like, bang. You know, that dear little soul was waiting for me to open myself up to say, what about you can I take in and be grateful for? Mm. Wow. And then she beat the cancer. She lived for a long time after that, but I made it a practice for the rest of her life that whether I rang her up or I was in person with her, I would tell her one thing that I was grateful for. Wow. You know, it, you know, sometimes it would be as simple as thank you for teaching me to love irony. You know, um, it wasn't always profound, but I, I have, I can, I can say to you, I didn't end a call or, or a visit with her without telling her something I was grateful for. What it helped me do is it helped me re, um, reestablish a relationship with her yeah. that was one of respect. Uh, when I may not have thought I could respect her, sometimes I had to dig a little deep, you know, to find yeah. something else. Yeah. But it was in the digging to find some new way that I was grateful to her, that I honored her. And that is a great... Um, spiritual principle. We need to learn to honor. Honoring our parents mm -hmm. is one of the scriptures with promise. And this sounds like I'm going off on a tangent. No way. I'm not. I'll bring it back. You watch by grace. But um, I think sometimes where we've had the most difficulty finding gratitude is if we have been wounded in our family of origin. You know, um, yeah. Yeah. family wounds. And Interestingly enough, that's where the first scripture with promise starts. That you will live long in the land the Lord your God has given you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think it is in digging in and, and asking, what am I grateful for? I have often said that unless you were raised by wolves or, um, you know, or some really nefarious individuals. And this, right. there are, yeah. there are mm -hmm. some bona fide monsters out oh, there. Yeah. Most of us haven't been raised by monsters. We've been raised by broken individuals that were broken through their yeah. family line yeah. and their life events. You can reach down and find something to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another, another, ding, 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 ding. Yeah, like that's all of this is so rich and so real and that's why we love and that's why we wanted you on it because you're so real and and you you hit so many good reality points it's not some you know airy fairy kind of prophetic whatever whatever but you know even for me back in the day when i started to hear about the father heart message you know and i had father wounds mother wounds like normal people mm -hmm. for all mm -hmm. real and and so when i started to hear about us needing to forgive in order to unlock them and unlock me well you know i did it kind of um i don't know more of an intellectual ascent as opposed to from my heart i wanted mm -hmm. i saw the real i saw the, the the truth and i did it and and once i did it my relationship with my dad that was kind of wonky and you know he's a man's man truck driver you know fonzie type from way back when or whatever right um all of a sudden we connected now it wasn't perfect but we still mm -hmm. connected we met somewhere to the point where because i used to be a drug addict as you know and um one father's day i phoned him i was in the midst of the toronto blessing and all that stuff and i felt well i'll phone dad and wish him a happy father's day and all that 
And, um, and I don't know why, other than it was the Holy Spirit, just out of the blue, I said, Dad, I want you to know that I don't blame you for becoming a drug addict and, and all the mess that I made in my life. And it got really, really quiet. And, and you gotta understand, dad never dealt with the emotion realm at all real, real well. Cause he just couldn't right? because of his own massive brokenness and it got really, really quiet. And then all of a sudden he piped up and he goes, you know, every single day I blame myself for how I wasn't a good father to you and your brother and your sister. And I'm thinking, Oh my God, like that crack opened up. But I am completely, fully persuaded that if I hadn't done the due diligence of, of forgiving and forgiving my sin toward my parents of rebellion and all that stuff, mm -hmm. that would have never happened. I would have, he would have went to his grave. Yeah. Me not knowing what my, my, the anguish my dad was going through because he blamed himself for my choices of becoming a drug addict in, in the crazy life that I lived. Yeah. And and so even with this, it's like the power of a grateful heart, the power of gratitude in a sense is so in, in the kingdom mindset. We're, we're talking from the kingdom realm. We're not talking from the flesh realm. We're talking from the kingdom realm, from the kingdom citizenship realm. And, 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 and it's sort of similar. I think, you know, chicken or the egg is, 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 a, gra is a grateful heart the same as a thankful heart or as one before and then the other. So for me, as I was thinking about this, um, the Lord really started to remind me of a, a teaching I heard from Bill Johnson about the power of thanksgiving mm. and that, you know, in everything, give thanks in everything. So you mean when I'm battling an incurable disease, I'm thanking God in this. Mm -hmm. And what I start, and what, what Bill said is that, the power of that thanksgiving actually can sanctify the situation, can sanctify yeah. everything involved and everyone involved, that the power of grace executed through our lips, through our heart of thanksgiving or gratitude, the power, the supernatural effects sanctifies. It's our partnership with the sanctifier Christ within us for situations, circumstances, relational things. So, so to me, the power of gratitude, the power of a grateful heart with that, what's God doing on a quantum level? And I love taking it to that level. It's like, okay, what's rippling out through your life all these years in all of your spheres? relationally in your marriage and your family and your in your ministry and others what's rippling if you choose if you set your intention which you had to do you literally had to hold your own feet to the fire yes. if yes. i say one thing if i have one angst for somebody i'm going to do five you're holding yourself you're setting your intention to be that diligent to to do that and you're, you're literally shifting and creating a brand new reality for you and for others, which is huge. Yeah. And you know what it does? It stops. And I'm just making a note of what I'm going to speak about tomorrow. I heard something. It's going to be good. Quickly. Awesome. Um, Let us know in the chat. Sorry. Let us know in the chat because we're watching on Facebook. Um, are, are you getting anything out of this, people? Where, yeah. where are you? <laughs> While you're saying that, I yeah. thought of, you know, when you talked about like thanking and then it sanctifies everything, I thought of, you know, the practice we have of saying grace before meals, for instance. Yeah. You're thanking God for the food and that sanctifies the food. But totally. it's just applying that to yes. everything. Totally. And watch the multiplication or whatever it is that the Holy Spirit wants to do. Watch that happen. Mm. Uh, yes. And, 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 uh, Going back a little bit, Larry, to what you were saying about uh, it, it became a discipline for me. It became a natural and logical consequence. What it did is I had, um, I like to have the last word, you know, just, um, and I was a murmurer, you know, murmuring, um, mum, mumbling. I think mm. as in our family of origin, you couldn't speak up, you couldn't say anything. Yeah. Um, then I became practiced at having the last word and mumbling under my breath. 
Uh, and I happened to live with somebody who could consistently out argue me. Dennis can consistently out argue me. Mm. Uh, and that's cool. I mean, you know, uh, but I, I would do an under my breath murmur. And mm. uh, so that practice helped me stop because every time I said something negative, again, I made myself find by positive things. Um, what happens now when I catch myself now, it, um, I, I tell you what, not too much annoys me any longer. It takes wow. quite a bit to annoy me, you know, and I think it's petty annoyances. Those aren't, um, that's different from legitimate anger. And yeah. that's even different from um, being grieved at world situations, but I'm talking about petty annoyances. So um, people cutting me off in traffic, people going too slow, honestly, by grace now, it doesn't bother me. Wow. However, if I catch myself saying idiot, and that's mm. my trigger word. Um, sadly, that's a word I have used along with other expletives that I'm not allowed to <laughs> share with you because you need to hear them. Um, <laughs> but you know what? When I catch myself dropping the word idiot, mm. and uh, sometimes it's in traffic, and boy, that's, that's my great alert because it takes so much to annoy me by grace. When I am annoyed, I think, oh, I've lost my center here. I've moved mm. out of being centered cool. in him to the point where I'm actually annoyed just because somebody cut me off. Like, when did my life become that self-important that someone else cutting me off, not putting me at life risk, not doing any damage, not crashing into me, mm. that's when I sit back and say, whoa, boy, howdy, I have lost my center. And the minute I start my, I don't always do it the minute, the minute I do that in, in, in those kind of situations, I recognize I need to get home and recenter myself and find out where I've lost my grounding in Christ that I could become that annoyed so easily. Mm -hmm. And then in um, sometimes the more intense relationships, when I catch myself murmuring or talking under my breath or needing to have the last word, that's when that becomes my alert. And I try not to let myself go back into that behavior. Do you know what I mean? That's kind of my, my um, uh, plumb line. Plumb line, thank you. Yeah. Um, and I recognize, no, you're losing traction here. And it, it you know, Jacqueline was saying, might I have some practices or disciplines that I could put in place? I would say that um, I think we need to be awake and alert to our own responses more than we are, if that makes so sense. Good. Yeah, so good. You know, I think we just go around saying, that's me, you know, that's yeah. me. And you know what? No, it's not. Well, it might be you, but it might not be Christ in you. It might not be the true you. It might right. still be a habit of the old false self, but it's exactly. not the true new you that exactly. you haven't fully discovered yet. Thank you, Larry. We're out of our, what we're calling original design. Mm -hmm. We're out mm -hmm. into something yep. that's old. Yep. And so I just think if you're awake and alert, but it means that you have to be awake and alert to mm -hmm what you're saying and doing and not defaulting into old habits. Does that, does that oh, totally. have any resonance? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I, so I think what you're saying to all of us is after this session, let's just be aware of how we're responding, what's happening internally when we're seeing or hearing or just being just to be aware of how we're reacting. And of course, to differentiate between, is that really me or is that really Christ in me? What were you going to say, Larry? Well, yeah. And I, I, and just to tag on this, I, this is, this is so rich. Katie, you're awesome. <laughs> God, you're awesome. You're, Thanks. you're awesome. God, you're awesome. And Katie. Yay. <laughs> um, so, so that people don't go down the rabbit hole of self, um, e examination. Yes. Because some of us are still working through, some people still could be working through condemning themselves. Mm 
Yes. It's like, okay, I blew it there. Oh, and you're mm -hmm. murmuring against yourself, right? Yes. And, and you don't even know you're murmuring against yourself. And sometime I've had to work through the fact that what I'm feeling is actually what I'm actually projecting from my own feeling of me. Very true. Yeah. And so, so as we're examining, as we're observing our own reactionary ways and our responses, our reactions of the flesh or our reactions to circumstances, that's where we have to have the plumb line that there is never, ever condemnation now for us in Christ Jesus. So we're not looking, we're not awake to these things so that we can condemn ourselves and say, oh, wretched me. It's like, no, what's missing is my execution of three or five things to counteract this. And, and this is where, to me, it's brilliant with Carolyn, Le Carolyn Leaf mm -hmm. with the thought things. It's like, okay, one negative does a whole bunch of stuff in your brain. So what, what we're talking about is executing an ability by grace with the Holy Spirit cooperating to rewrite and reconfigure our brain so that we're no longer living and functioning and reacting from the false self, but we're cooperating to discover and rewire with the Holy Spirit our new, our new mind. You know, we've got a new heart, a new mind, a new spirit. And to me, this is the bridge to be able to step over with a simple discipline. It might not feel simple at the, at the beginning because, you know, a lot of us could be just that, that river doesn't like to stop. That brook is constantly running. And if we don't, if we don't arrest it, if we don't um, become aware of it, we'll never see that there's something new. But once we become aware of it, it, it can eventually diminish. Like you say, you're hardly annoyed now. And, and to me, um, I think this is all just rich beyond measure. Anything else, Jacqueline? I think Katie wanted to say something. Well, I, yeah. I want to be sensitive to the timeline because we've got three days and I can make notes of, um, what, what's no, our timeline? Good. We, we're good. Day. We're still yeah, quarter yeah. to two here. So yeah, quarter to two. So yeah, we, we can, we can go for another days. three hours for people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. This is what just came to me, Larry, from what you were saying. Uh, and thank you for uh, processing out loud with me because I think this is an additional step. Uh, it's, uh, it is recognizing that um, most of what comes out towards other people is how we feel about ourselves. And I, yeah. I called myself idiot countless times, countless yeah. times. That was yeah. my internal dialogue. You yeah. idiot, you yeah. idiot, you idiot, you loser, you idiot, you idiot. Um, and the other expletives, uh, you know, and uh, I, I recognized that <coughs> I needed to be a little bit more grateful for how he wired me, you know, um, yeah. and now uh, this is, this might sound very lame, but I'm going to, just going to share. Uh, I'm probably one of the things I'm going to talk about if it goes away, I think it might be going is my love of light. I love light and there's a whole mm. thing. Uh, and so Christmas lights make me extraordinarily happy. Christmas lights have made me happy since I've been small. The older I get, the more excited I get about them. And uh, <laughs> I happy danced outside of a house here in our neighborhood um, last year in the dark all by myself huh. with Toby, who <laughs> has the grace not, he's our dog, has the grace not to get embarrassed by me. Um, you know, and I just happy danced on the street because the lights made me so happy. Yeah. I have caught myself um, actually this was so weird, skipping down the road when we used to live in Curtis on that yeah. in, on yeah. Nashville and nobody could see me. Um, <laughs> and my, you know, I skipped down the road because I thought, oh, I forgot to remember what it feels like to skip, to be just so free that I can skip. And then, I'm, I'm celebrating more of how I recognize my original design was probably to be more celebratory mm -hmm. than I was in my life. Mm -hmm. I was one of those individuals, and I can remember this, my first job in Stony Creek, Ontario. Um, I moved to Hamilton. I had a job in, in Stony Creek. And uh, 
if I, if I woke up happy in a day, I did whatever I could do to make sure I ended it unhappy. Now that's terrible. But, um, or if I started out, you know, something felt wrong and I got happy, I wouldn't trust it. Mm -hmm. I had this because I hated surprises. I hated, you know, that sense of something bad's going to happen. The other shoe is going to drop. Mm -hmm. yep. And I wouldn't, I, I just wouldn't celebrate. I, I was afraid to celebrate. I was afraid to rejoice in, in um, what I had at the moment because something worse, I was yeah. always projecting yeah. Yeah. Um, what, was, that what bad was going to happen. Normally, this time of year, as soon as my birthday came up, and my birthday is, you know, it was just a few days ago, um, I started to get sad because mm. it meant that fall was coming. Mm. And you know what? In, in southern Ontario, fall was quite a bit away by mm. the second last week of August. But I would start to get a low-grade depression wow. as soon as my birthday came because it meant that November was coming. Mm. And so it was that anxiety of what was coming. I would get overwhelmed. So I lost mm. being able to celebrate what I still had. Wow. Yeah. Today. Yeah. And now, you know, we're, we're here in Calgary now, Alberta. Um, which is southern Alberta, but it's still way the heck north compared to where we lived in Ontario. Mm -hmm. It's all perspective. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, the Edmontonians are like, yeah, this is southern Alberta. And we're like, yeah, well, we'll take a look at the map and see where <laughs> it was in relationship to where we used to live. Hello. Bottom line is it can snow here anytime. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of us are aware, you know, when you get good weather, you're a little like, huh, what's going to come? <laughs> so I was at the Pilates studio today and waiting to get in and the girls are going, it's beautiful. And someone else said, yeah, but when I drove up, all the aspens are turning yellow already. You know, that's oh, our indicator. Fine. You know what I mean? And it keeps you from being present in the moment so good. Yeah. and being grateful in the moment. And I'm practicing now living fully aware of what I have in the present yeah. and not forecasting, oh, yeah, it's nice today, but it could it could snow on my tomatoes in two weeks and it could, it has snowed on my tomatoes early September, you know, there you go. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I try to shift. Mm -hmm. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? And it's totally. being present. Last yeah, night, I, um, my daughter, my, um, you know, I had a beautiful birthday dinner with some of my kids, you know, two of the kids had lovely dinners for me. And then the other day I wanted to make for myself what my mom always made for me for my birthday. And it, it was, um, she would, she would, um, she called it New England boiled dinner. I don't know if that's what it really was or the name she gave it. But what it was, was just chicken and all the new vegetables. So it had new potatoes, new carrots, and new green and yellow beans. Because that's when they're the sweetest, when they're tiny and little. So I just thought, oh, I want to honor my mom. I want to say thank you to her for, for choosing to have me and um, bringing me into the world. So last night I made, for Dennis and I, but for me, New England boiled dinner. And so I did it in this, you know, skillet. And I tell you what, I snuck a green bean out of the pan before I served Dennis and I was eating this green bean and it tasted like the meal my mom made for me. Wow. And I was going around my kitchen. <laughs> hey, mom, thanks for this, you know what I mean? And just doing a happy dance over the taste of a green bean that had been cooked with new carrots and that had been cooked with new potatoes and being cooked on a chicken. Hmm. <laughs> Isn't that remarkable? I love that. Like yeah. you just grateful for the little, the big, everything. I think that that is such it. a wonderful place to be. Well, it circled me right back to my mom. Yes. Wow. You no, know, yes. it circled me right back to thank you for choosing to have me when I know she mm. didn't want to because yeah. she didn't want to but so so look at the timeline because uh, i love to do this when i coach people is to make people become aware of their timeline mm -hmm. so you said you're 65 so you already gave it out so i'm not yep. i'm not <laughs> doesn't she look <laughs> lovely for she looks gorgeous yeah. she's a wonderful <laughs> mama so think back in your brokenness. I don't want you to go back there, but think back in your broke, most broken time when you were a kid because you've come through some deep, deep waters. We know that. We honor your testimony as outrageous testimony of the goodness and grace and 
large love of God. Back then, would you would would you have ever been able to dream of the condition of your life, the condition of your heart and your relationship with love, your relationship with gratitude, your relationship with what you have now and 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 it, are you not you know it's kind of rhetorical are you not completely overwhelmed with how much you're seeing the goodness of god in the land of the living because you're willing and obedient to hold yourself to the fire in a godly way in a faith-filled way not a legalistic way not under the law but in a in a godly kingdom way christ-like way you're holding your feet to the fire you're willing and obedient to mortify the deeds of the flesh by the spirit there it is right there and that's that's a new level for me of seeing that right there it's like you know mortify the deeds of the fl flesh by the by the spirit mortify the deeds of the flesh this is that mm. now it takes a bit of cooperation it doesn't just you know, sometimes I think we, we charismatics is just going to fall. It's like somebody's just going to lay hands on me and I'm just going to have an impartation. I'm going to be woohoo, you know, sometimes, maybe. But there has to be a walking out, uh, an execution. And, and I'll, I'll stop with this for me <clears throat> and, and let you go. So annoyance from a famous Bible that we're now looking at talking about the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So back, you know, when we did the peace challenge, from chaos to the peace of God, what struck me, and this is why we started with this, I felt to start with this, is to unmask what evil is according to the original um, definition of the knowledge of good and evil. Evil is an ooga booga with a... a um, a pitchfork and a red suit and, and some thing we need to bat in the air, evil there is, is chaos, annoyance, hardship, and toil through self-effort, basically. Wow. That's the expansion yeah. of the, the definition of that evil. So what we're combating, what you're giving out today is keys how to by the Spirit, cooperating with the Spirit is mortify any residue or branch or, or residual of the tree. The old tree has been cut down, but those annoyances still might be resident in, in, in the imaginations, in the, in the habits. But through gratitude, through the power of gratitude, we can mortify, we can circumcise, we can annihilate so that we make room for the fullness of what we are in I am. You know, I am who I am in I am, yes. as he says. I'm not trying to become something esoteric. I am a son clothed with and full of the I am. And yeah. the more that I can swat those flies through gratitude... Really? Through gratitude, I can actually mortify those annoyances and allow the authentic, true, new me to arise and to literally, without limit, shine by the simplicity of executing gratitude. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I think you just put language to the whole thing. Thank you, Larry. Yeah, wow. Isn't God amazing? Yeah, he really is. He really is. This would be what I would like to suggest um, an exercise for today. Brilliant. Would be for everyone on the call to find five things that they are grateful for in how the I am is mirrored in you. So I'll say that. I'll say that to you. I'll be like the romper room lady. I'll talk it with your faces. <laughs> right um, but I'd like you to sit down and write down five ways that the I am shines through you mm. and how he is in you. And remember, it could be absolutely riotous. It could be that the I am, um, you know, when I am dancing in my kitchen over a green bean, 
I don't think Papa sees that as too unusual because he was the not creator. for you, maybe for me, but no. Oh, well, not green beans, but yeah, you know, for whatever tomato, whatever it is. But you know what? When you can celebrate with passion something that may even seem simple, so um, whether that's a good brew, whether you know, whatever mm -hmm, it is, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. that you can sit quietly and recognize how he reflects himself in you because if you will find the five things and as i'm talking about this i think i'd have to work to find five things myself like i would have to mm. and, and i will do that i'll sit down and say huh is this making me as uncomfortable as it might be making you that's why it's a challenge but it, that's why it is a challenge and mm. so i'm asking each of you sit down and say how is he reflected in you? And don't focus on how he isn't. Focus mm. on how he is. Brilliant. Wow. You know, because when, when we do what Larry's saying, uh, when we get in touch with who is in us and we sit under the tree of life, mm -hmm. not under the I am not tree, and I love how yeah. our friend talks about the tree mm -hmm. of the knowledge of good and evil, he calls it the I am not tree. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's where most of us have positioned ourselves in our life and says, I'm not this, I'm not good enough, I'm not that. Mm -hmm. um, and that puts paid to the dance under the tree of the knowledge of good and evil when you sit under the tree of life and say five things. And please take the time to do it and move past how you're uncomfortable. And I would say perhaps that some of you may not be able to find them. I would think that uh, six to eight years ago, I would have been hard pressed to come up with myself five ways that I thought the I am reflected himself in me. Get someone that knows you to help you. Reach out to somebody in this group that knows you or reach out to that kindred, that trusted person in your life and say, I'm a little bit stuck. I can't find five things and I've got homework to do before tomorrow. Help me see things about me that I don't see. Awesome. That's brilliant, Katie. That's brilliant. Oh, boy. We've got some homework to do, don't we? <laughs> mm -hmm. Because to see, it. and that scripturally lines up with the scripture that used to make me so frustrated was that you have to love yourself before you can love others. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. was, and like, I used to get flat out annoyed with that like how on earth are you not in my life like do you not know who i am <laughs> no mm -hmm. uh, so it's a scriptural principle and yeah. you can do it you can do it yes. you've got the can do power of the holy spirit in you there you go there you go <laughs> or like my, my kids used to like to sing to each other you can do it cinderella Cinderella. Yes, right. I remember that. No, that's going to be in my head. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. You can do it, Cinderella, and the little mice are cheering you on. You and me go, girl. Come on. Bye. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's our admission for the group. You can do it, Cinderella. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, way to end, eh? Beautiful. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah. Thank you so Ooh. much, Katie. Thank you. We're look, really Bye. looking forward to. Huh. <sighs> What else Papa's going to come up with? Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say one thing, though, that I was struck with the fact that the comments that you made earlier, and I guess we'll just end with that, too, is that a lot of the ungratefulness in our hearts stems from our mom and dad yeah. and how we grew up under that. Like, that just is so, that is so key mm -hmm. to a lot of things. And I just, I'm pondering that because I can mm -hmm. see how that is really accurate and true in a lot of my life and a lot of the people that we know and love wow yeah uh, yeah. yeah i'm gonna get that homework done reflection i'm gonna yes. put that in the notes in the group just to yeah. remind everyone exactly and, what the exercise is yeah and and really appealing to the ones in the group um be brave be vulnerable be brave um and look at it as an exercise of your conversation with the Holy Spirit within you. The Holy Spirit knows how he's shining and what level he's shining. 
the Christ likeness in it. We're all under construction. We're all on different levels of the mountain, so to speak, or whatever. So it's not that we're asking you to lie. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to say, oh, yes, I've I've raised the dead. I've this. It isn't about the works. It's about how much, how much has Jesus been able to love my wife today or this week? How much, you know, but again, look at this as an exercise of conversation with you and the Holy Spirit, the lover of your soul, Jesus, the Father. Okay, Trinity, I double dog dare you. Show me how much, because if I look through my lens, I'm only going to see my my daddy and mommy wounds, maybe still that aren't that aren't fully dealt with. But flip over and 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 lean into and challenge that you know I am not tree, that I am not thing. Challenge it by trusting Holy Spirit. It's like Lord, I'm going to do my homework. I'm going to be a good little student because the teacher has appeared through Katie Weedrick, the beautiful one of 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 heaven on earth. How do you see me? And I'm telling you, I think some of you are going to be surprised at, and do not ignore and do not sabotage. If you hear a positive thing, it's like, oh my God, where'd that come from? It probably ain't you. <laughs> it's probably the spirit of the Lord saying that even though it might be a flicker, it might be a smoldering flax, but it's still some measure. And, and I'm telling you, by the power of acknowledging that in you and being grateful for whatever level of it is, it's going to grow. It's going to, you know, the expansion is going to grow by the acknowledging. Yes. And so, yes, Jackie. Now, is it how do you see me or how is Abba reflected in me? Like five yeah, ways. Yeah, Abba thank you. How, how, opposed, how are you, Father, reflecting yeah. yourself through me? Yes, yeah. as opposed to how you see me, right? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Thank you, Jacqueline. Good, good, good. That makes it like your Ann Pritchard said, that this homework is a challenge for sure. That makes it even a whole lot more challenging. <laughs> yeah, and again, no condemnation. We're not right. we're not trying to measure you because you're going to be hauled into the principle no. or anything. It's no. a case of this is an opportunity for you to build deeper intimacy with the lover of your soul, with the teacher, Holy Spirit, that isn't there to, in a sense, correct you, but fulfill you. To, I love what Graham Cooks is like, there's not something wrong with you, there's just something missing. So in a sense, he's going to show you what may be missing or what's beginning to happen because he's relationally growing us up into the tree of life ourselves with Christ. So, yeah, just be blessed. We I, love I, you guys. I just want, yeah. me. I just had one yeah. last yeah. Piece. Yeah. Listen, I think this might help some of us that are struggling because we might think that they need to be profound things. But I tell you what, this again was this time of year, golly, probably seven or eight years ago, there was a well-known speaker at the church that my husband and I were at, the embassy um, in Oshawa, Ontario. And Dennis had been to his country and spoken in his church. And uh, you know how when you get around the prophetic, mm -hmm. folk, there's a bit of, you know, the hangers on and the lookers to see who's going to get a word and who's going to get that. Mm -hmm. So they were all in the, in the lead pastor's office and, you know, post service and I was waiting and there was other people waiting for, you know, Dennis to come out. So anyway, uh, it was my birthday. It was my, I think it was like two or three days around my birthday. And, but, uh, and so um, when Dennis came out, he said to this, this prophet, he said, it's my wife's birthday do you have a word for her? And he was a tall um, Nigerian, believe that way, tall and big. And I didn't have a chance to stand up yet. He just came over and he went like this. He just went, smacked his head, hand on my head and said, God bless this simple woman. And uh, I heard people around me, they, they took an intake of breath. And a few afterwards said, did that offend you? And I, I wanted to weep. That was one of the greatest identifiers of who I see myself to be in Christ mm -hmm. is a simple woman. Yeah. Because this is not a complicated road. This is not a complicated gospel. And it's mm -hmm. not a complicated kind yeah. of kingdom. Amen. But my life had been complicated. And I had, everything had seemed hard. When he said, God bless this simple woman, I identify myself 
with grace and with real um, a settledness that I am a simple woman. My messages are often simple and I'm content with that. So when he identifies things in you, I'm just suggesting that it may not be all that um, weird and wonderful. It may be as quiet as you are a simple woman. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. I love it. I oh, love it. That's the cherry on top. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, people, Facebook land, friends, family, peacemakers. Do your homework, like good little <laughs> lovers of God, and we will see you tomorrow at one Eastern. And um, don't you know? Feel free to share and engage with one another. You know, edification, exhortation, just be a blessing to each other. And we will see you tomorrow. Bless you.